Hey guys, welcome to D&D uh, &D with Filthy and Friends. Uh, you might see some new spaces here. Um, this week, Adam, our regular GM, is unavailable. Uh, so rather than produce no content, we're going to do a quick one-off here. And I guess this is maybe the time to break some bad news to introduce us a little bit more. Um, it seems Zylo is uh, moving on for bigger and better places. Uh, he will be with us for at least another month, but uh, probably, probably not after that. So we're just starting to look around to see who might be replacing him. And uh, I reached out to Roomba, and Roomba seemed interested. So we're going to do a couple one-offs, ideally, with the Roomba, get a sense if, if it works out for everybody, if he wants to be a part of it after he's seen the quality of our players, and if uh, post-fact our players can uh, can deal with Roomba's min-maxing. It's going to be, we're going to see. We're going <laughs> to see how this works out. So today is going to be a one-off. I'm DMing. I know you guys haven't seen me DM yet. This is only my second time ever, and I'm super uncomfortable with Roll20 as a system for that. So... Um, Expect some cluster fucking. That's that's just how today's gonna be. <laughs> so well, we'll go from there. That's right. That's right. Uh, hopefully we manage that. I'm a bit worried that we don't even get that part. It's just kind of off to the side or something. So um, yeah, we're gonna work hard on uh, making this making this a thing. Uh, so we're gonna do a uh, one-off episode here. Um, probably end up being one to two. We'll see. Maybe it end up being a two-part thing. Uh, with a set of new characters for this and a set of new personalities for this. So um, just quickly introducing everyone again, if you're not just tuning in for this. Um, I, let me see how the actual overlay looks for you guys. All right, I'm me, I'm Filthy Robot. If you don't know me, I don't know why you're here, but that's great. Hit the follow button, the subscribe button, and we'll, we'll work from there. Uh, just to my immediate uh, one over is Arumba uh, of uh, both uh, YouTube and Twitch of the same name, Arumba0707. Um, we've done some collaborations in the past and, uh, super excited to be working together again. So, uh, that's cool. Next up is Zylo, um, long-term, uh, supporter and viewer of my channel and been playing D&D &D with him now for, I don't know, it's gotta be a year and a half or something like that. Something like that. Yeah. So, uh, anyways, you guys should know Zylo. Steve, uh, next up from, uh, his own Twitch channel as well, runs a Twitch and YouTube channel. This is Joe and Ribs. If you don't know him, awesome stuff. Doing a lot of Slay the Spire right now. Definitely check him out. And then uh, Kevin, who is a real-life friend of mine, who is uh, getting back into D&D, &D, has some extensive experience with it in other editions, and uh, doing his best to keep our, ch our our entire party rolling on the floor laughing right now. That's what's been happening. So, no? No, not allowed with that? All right, well, no no pressure. That, I, I don't think that's my <laughs> job. I think I think I'm the straight man, and, and you folks are the ones that are the, the huh. trouble. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. But I get to now summarize... Not from a character perspective, but a DM perspective. So I get, anyways, we're going to have fun with this. I'm looking forward to it. All right. So um, let me uh, set the set the scene. So um, just a couple things for, I, I haven't DM with you guys before, and I've only DM'd a little bit. I want to tell you some things about how I see your characters in role play. So let's get this out, out there. Um, your characters are creatures of this world. They have grown up and... You know, I don't want to say leveled up, but they've accomplished their 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 things in this world. They've accumulated skills and are immersed in it in terms of lore and creatures of it and deities of it and this type of thing. Um, there's going to be times when I when I make you roll for knowledge and make you roll for history and stuff like this. But in general, you're going to know the things that are happening around you because this is the world you live in. So if you as a player don't know, it is totally acceptable to be like. Hey, filthy, out of character, uh, would I know this? And if I do know this, can you tell me what it is? Because I don't know this as, as the player. And that's totally acceptable. And I would actually encourage you guys to do that. I will do my best to give you guys descriptions of, guy, uh, of creatures and things you encounter. And if it is something I expect you to know more about, I will try to point out to you, here's the things you'd know about this just from your histories and backgrounds. Um, you, however, are a... Oh, oh, also, the other part to put into fact here is for the purpose of this campaign, you guys know each other pre pre you haven't just been thrown together you guys have been working together you have trust and rapport you can decide how much like you have like how much you actually like each other dislike each other that's fine but you have trust and rapport you work together you're a group you are an adventuring group and that's a thing in this world in this world there are enough you know, dangerous and crazy things out there that people can make a living as adventurers they're kind of like almost like the handyman of of you know, oh, there's orcs over here, or we have an item we need retrieved over here. You guys get things done, and you're willing to take the risks and uh, reap the rewards for doing that. So we have a le leaking sink and bugbears. Could you help yeah, out? One <laughs> exactly. Yeah, one and it doesn't really matter the order. Sometimes, like some of you, right. maybe that's all you bring to the party is you're a skilled mechanic. I don't know. We'll see. Or a skilled plumber, I guess, in this this scenario. So Should it, we do character introductions at some point, too? Yeah, we, we'll get to that in just a second. Let me give you okay. the kind of backdrop of what we're doing, and then you guys can introduce yourselves to the viewers and whatnot. Gotcha. Right. Um, <laughs> you guys are now here in the city of Molemaster. 
Um, this is a... Uh, and actually, no, this is interesting too, because as a DM, I'm going to take all the artistic liberty I want with this. So I may botch the lore here. And for those fans who are worried about that, I, all I can say is suck it. So um, here we go. So in this, in this, <laughs> in this version of Mole Master, you are in a fairly tropical port city. Um, this is, there's a large river coming from the southwest, or, the, or excuse me, the north, uh, northwest down through the city uh, where it opens into the Bay of Mole Master. Uh, and the city is sat there, the river um, passes through the city, and it's a port city. It's a city state, so it has its own government and its own um, collection of rulers here, uh, and it doesn't answer to anybody else. Uh, but it's a fairly powerful city state, uh, which makes good money from its trade and port. It's a, it's a trading city to, to a large extent. Um, the city itself is run by um, kind of a council of lords. So there's a number of lords uh, hypothetically of equal power, but of course there are minor and uh, major powers in that. Uh, often these lords form power blocks. Um, so the, the changing political landscape is a pretty big part of, of Mo Master. So deception, intrigue, lying, cheating, stealing, this type of stuff. This is the culture of the ruling class of Mo Master. Um, all right, so you guys are brought in here into this, uh, and you basically been, you're, to put it from a different, when I've run this module before, I think a player suggested this, you essentially have a headhunter. You have someone who is, you know, your agent looking out for jobs for you. And that person has connected you with a job here. So you're not from Mole Master. You're an outside group. And you're actually specific, it was specifically requested for this job for an outside group. And for you guys, this represents a pretty cool opportunity. Mole Master is fairly closed society in the sense that they have their own adventures. They have their own specialists. And this, this is, a, as I said, a very high intrigue style uh, city. So they often have people they have to do these types of things. You guys are getting essentially an in to the city because there's a lord who has a specific reason for you guys being there as outsiders and if you do this well you might have the opportunity to take other contracts from other other lords here or or uh, get into a society that you wouldn't otherwise have an into so there's some for you guys benefits above and beyond any pay or items or loot or anything else that you take from this because it can further your ability to to adventure in this area right Right. networking yeah, okay exactly. so I have, I have a question d sure. d does that mean th that our agent is here and he's basically a, a contact to here or he was from where we're wherever we came from and he just heard about this and so we're here alone he's actually his job is actually he, he manages a couple groups like yourself we're getting some background noise but he's but he's not here in the town uh no no he's not here now he has essentially okay. introduced you uh and otherwise you know he's been contacted by uh, the, the, your contact in this area. So the, the Lord has reached out to you. Her name is Zora right. Rosaline Culkin. You'll meet her in just a moment. Um, but she has basically said, I need, I need a group. Uh, and she's reached out and he's been like, you know, I have the perfect group. They're in the area. They can be here quickly. And that was part of the, part of the requirements of this is this is a time sensitive mission. All right. So you guys right now are at one of her manors. This is one of her um, summer homes. This one is actually doesn't seem to be as you approach. There's some guards on the door. Uh, you're met at the door by her manservant, uh, Dawson, and he uh, ushers you in to speak with uh, the, the lady. And you can kind of see that this is, this is almost mothballed a little bit. You know, there's, there's uh, sheets over the furniture and stuff like this. This is one of her houses, and it's a summer house, so hypothetically it's going to see some use for this time of year, but it's not busy. This is, um, it's not uh, particularly heavily saturated by servants or guardsmen or stuff like that. It's just not actually one of the ones that she uses very actively right now. So she, she brings you in. It's a fairly fine room, um, all the accoutrements you'd expect from nobility. And she sits you down and says, good, I'm glad you guys could make it. Um, I've been uh, needing, I need, I need to converse with you, make sure you're the right people for the job, and then get you guys going on this because this is important to me and this is time sensitive. So first off, is there anything you guys need to be to make uh, anything you need to be made comfortable? Anything I can get for you or have my men get for you? Uh, or can we get right into it? So character introductions? Don't get pushy, Zylo. I guess we can do. I guess. All right. So uh, I mean, I mean, it makes sense to do character introductions before you start role playing, right? That's fine. OK, let's do some quick character interrupt interruptions. Uh, interactions <laughs> we'll start with the Roomba <laughs> all right uh, okay. same order just because it's the order on the on the on OBS so Roomba who are you playing today uh my character's name is uh 
Faedon or Faedon, depends on where you come from, how you want to pronounce it. Um, I'm a mountain dwarf paladin, uh, vengeance paladin, a uh, bit stocky, you know, like most dwarves. I like to defend my uh, my brethren, my friends, um, but I'm also not against getting down with uh, a little bit of vengeance and, and killing some big orcs or, or whatever. Uh, I have a very high armor class. I'm very proud of it. I, I like to just get up right up front and just just interrupt the enemy. I don't want them to hurt my friends. So you're kind of so the bruiser that's... or like brawler of your group. You're saying, or yeah, whatever, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'll get right up, up in there. I was, <laughs> it was funny with character creation. I was considering uh, taking a whip instead of like a, a battle axe or something, just so that I could like grab people, and like pull them to me, be like get over here, you know. <laughs> but uh, that didn't sound like it would work out, so I didn't do that. <laughs> so instead, I'll just run up to him. And he's down with the vengeance. Yes. Yeah. All right, Zyla. Okay. Uh... Uh, I'm playing Bernard the Brave. He is a halfling cleric. He's not actually particularly brave. Uh, his his older brother was actually the brave one and called him that name sarcastically. And then his older brother went off and died adventuring, and so Bernard just kind of kept the name out of out of honor. Uh, but he's a he's a he's a cleric. He wears armor. He's halfling. He's kind of a coward, and He's going to make sure that the rest of the party does not die. Is that like that's his big thing? Is he's not going to let his friends down? And that kind of makes sense for from a coward perspective. If the guy in front exactly. of you dies, you're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. All right. Cool. I I, sud I suddenly find myself unnaturally protective of Bernard the Brave. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, all right. Steve, uh, who are you playing today? Well, I'm Jonathan Weatherford from Twenty Seven Crescent Lane. I'm a I'm a ten year old. Wild magic sorcerer, um, inspired heavily by a British schoolboy who's been possessed. Um, and we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Clearly, I should have been. Uh, this was kind of rushed. We only had our, our GM cancel on us on a Monday, and uh, this is Wednesday for us recording this. Clearly, I should have been a little bit more clear about rules for uh, for Steve over here. He's taking some liberty with my uh, my goodwill here. We'll see what we can do about that. The ten year old I'm, fucking sorcerer child I'm over here. I'm just reskinning a wild magic sorcerer. Sure, There's nothing sure. unique about mm -hmm. how I'll be playing it really. Mm -hmm. um, and I know common draconic and Latin. Okay, I see. Is is it, does that exist in this world? It does now. <laughs> all right all right if you think we're letting you into bars you're you're wrong that's right. <laughs> outside young man that's all yeah yeah i think that i think we're i gonna... have proficiency in persuasion deception and intimidation so i'll get myself <laughs> into the bar intimidation? I want no part of this yep. all right this is this is okay yep we invite people for their personalities even steve you can't tell sometimes so i'm excited to see where this goes uh, Kevin, who are you playing today? I am a wood elf monk um, that uh, is um, lo looking for adventure, but um, ki kind of um, nihilist and a little bit pacifistic. And so I'm I'm inclined to um, put put everyone at ease and and try to make sure that fights don't happen. At the same time, I'm looking for. I don't know, great experiences and adventure. And so um, I'm, I'm a little bit on a, a, a crossroads here where um, most adventure doesn't come with peaceable intentions. So got to got to figure out what that looks like. Okay. So right. if you're trying to avoid conflict and Bernard is trying to avoid conflict, then that means we're basically being led by a 10 year old kid. <laughs> oh, yeah, I have I have trait. I have feats for that. I'm the leader. That's, That's right. You're the leader. <laughs> <laughs> I have the inspiring leader feed. Like, That's, makes That's perfect amazing. Sense to me. That's and great. And a noble background. Yep. Come on, guys. Yeah. Candies and hotties around the corner. <laughs> a 10? Yeah. Right. It's probably you girls at 10. I found this very inspiring 10 year old, and I've been following him around ever since, <laughs> just protecting him. Exactly. I mean, that, that might actually be the dynamic there. He may think he's leading, and you guys might be like, holy shit, he's going to get himself killed if we don't do something about this. So, somebody's like, got to stay, stay at his side. And, yeah, you guys yeah. have probably instilled in him like the desire that you really lead from the rear. That's how a, a wise leader leads. And, like, you know, we'll, we're, you know, we'll be in here as your grunts kick down this door. You go watch the, the back over there. You know, like, I can see this. Anyways, all right, we'll see how that plays out. I'm quite curious now all right so um 
as I said, we'll get we'll get back to where we were. So um, you're brought in by uh, Rosa. Uh, Rosa's a title. Oh, excuse me, Zora is a title. So it's Zora Rosa Culkin. And, uh, so her name is Rosaline Culkin. The title is Zora. It means she's the leader of one of the great houses of uh, Mullmaster. Um, so her her manservants brought you in, sat you down, and as she's offering things like refreshments and whatnot, she uh, she steps in. She says, also. Um, it's a little awkward, I'm sure, but we can make an arrangement. If we, you need childcare during this mission, we can <laughs> certainly get that taken care of if that would be helpful. And uh, she looks pointedly at you, Steve. Oh, that's okay. I don't have any children yet. Uh, and she looks a bit a bit confused, like um, she's waiting for the, you know, the, the punchline of the joke. And uh, says, well, all right, we'll get to it then. Um, Maybe you guys can uh, give me a little bit more background about yourselves. Uh, I, I don't often work outside of our, our my own organization, but there's been some internal strife, internal tr trouble, and I've been forced to, to reach outside of my, my normal contacts. You guys were recommended to me by someone I trust, um, but perhaps perhaps you could tell me just a little bit more. What have you accomplished in your in your lives thus far? What, have, what, uh, what makes you particularly suitable for this position? There's, uh, you may have heard of Red Lurch and the troubles with the, the elemental cultists in that area. We were instrumental in, in um, annoying those cultists seriously while that, uh, while that <laughs> situation was brought to a successful resolution. Um, that, that, that's probably our largest recent claim to fame. Okay. Okay. And and we've been doing and we've been doing this for a few years, so try try to forget the fact that that means we started when uh, our friend here was like seven years old. And he's always contributed. He's he's a full member of your organization. Oh, you guys yeah. would know that I'm possessed mm -hmm. by a demon. Oh, okay. Um, the demon like provides me with adult knowledge of what's going on around me. Gotcha. <laughs> so it's not really you. It's kind of the demon that's the party, that that's the party member. Somewhat, sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he's 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 been pulling his weight just fine. Yeah, he's he 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 does well. Okay, I, it, foreigners, what can I say? Th th think of it as a as a homunculus. It's 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 a a full grown amazing human being that accidentally got shoved into um, this little little amazing person. Okay, shoved in, you say? Phrase. All right. Um. So let me tell you what you're here for. Um. So. I, uh, as I said, I, I'm, I'm a lord of this, of this city, and one of my holdings northwest of the city has recently been destroyed. This was a village of a fair number of both workers as well as a storage area for some of the materials and products of my guilds. Um, this was destroyed suddenly and unexpectedly by parties as of yet unknown, and I fear that my house is under attack. Simultaneously, to make matters worse, there's been recent exposure of spies riddling my, my organizations, and I suspect that we are under some sort of systematic attack, uh, perhaps to knock us out of eminence or some similar uh, feature. And this, this I'm not going to sit back and just allow this to happen. Um, the first, and this is why this is time sensitive, because just recently, uh, a woman had floated into Molemaster down from the river. Uh, she almost floated out to sea and was saved only by some brave guardsmen who sp spotted her, basically swam in and rescued her. And the wreckage she is on is clearly from the town that was destroyed from here. I want to know what this woman knows. And she is currently under guard, uh, recovering in the House of Suffering, which is basically a hospital. You guys would know it's, it's run by run by monks, run by a religious organization that takes in people regardless of their ability to pay to, to basically help them along the road of recovery. She is being guarded at the House of Suffering. And my spies tell me that she is not yet conscious. She's drifting in and out of consciousness, not quite ready, quite capable of talking yet. But I fear for her. Um, the city is in turmoil. There are factions that are in opposition to each other that are flexing muscles in ways that normally isn't seen here. In other words, this is more dangerous than it would be normally. And one of those factions that is looking to uh, accrue more power is the, the Hawks. This is the secret police of Molemaster. And they have set guards around her, and I fear that they will disappear her. This is not an uncommon thing in Molemaster. If you don't have the political clout to 
to stop such a thing, you sometimes just disappear if it's convenient for the Hawks to make that happen. And I worry she will disappear with the knowledge of what has happened uh, to my town. So do you, are you saying you care, you care more about the information or about the woman? I care about the information. Um, I know nothing about this one woman one way or the other. If she is one of my people, um, and I don't know that one way or the other, then I would like her taken care of and cared for. Uh, but if she just has information about this, this whatever this has, whatever this is, whatever has occurred, then I want that information. So, so does this mean you, you think it's most likely someone from within the city that's causing all of these problems? Maybe even the Hawks? It seems a little early for me to speculate on the information I have. I suspect that, I mean, this is part of the, the essentially the Game of Thrones here in Mullmaster. This is part of the intrigue of, and part of my duty as leader of my house is to protect versus this type of attack. Um, certainly, n people are rarely this overt. Rarely, it results in mass loss of life like this. But perhaps this is a new, particularly brutal faction emerging or something similar. So yes, it could be an internal internal to Mullmaster. I don't think internal to my organization. Um, all right. So... And, and would you prefer that we fix this with a, a clever tongue or perhaps some fireballs? <laughs> she... Well... The guardsmen guarding her are just city watch guardsmen. They are not, they're not affiliated with the Hawks, but they can be commanded by the Hawks. These are people who have devoted their lives to keeping order in the city. Um, I would prefer they didn't come to harm if it's not necessary for that to happen, but I care more about the information than I do about their lives. Um, the monks guarding, or the monks who run the House of Suffering, these, are an, these, these men have been devoted to their religion since they were children, and are a pacifist organization that is dedicated purely to healing the wounded for free. I would very much not want them to come to any harm if that is possible. There's no reason that monks' lives should be lost here. So don't blow up the quarter. We're looking for a little bit more of a subtle touch than that, yes. All right, right then. Sounds like we need to get going and go help this woman. That's right, because I worry that any moment she might be gone. So Zora, Zora Colkin, I, I have a few more questions, please. Sure. Um, you said that this was a storage area, but you didn't say what sorts of things were being stored in this town or, or the name of the town for that matter. Um, the town is perhaps ironically named Emberwood. Uh, That's and, unfortunate, isn't it? Yes. And part of what we stored there were finished products. Um, some of what we stored there were raw materials. It's, it's further up the river and the river flows down into Mullmaster. So this was kind of a staging point for resources being brought from further up the river. My, my apologies, Zora. Um, when you say finished products and materials for products, that still doesn't tell me whether it is drug trade or religious symbols that you're crafting. All of, uh, the material being stored or produced in this area was above board. All of this is legal enterprise. Uh, and I can't think of anything noteworthy of it. These are simple materials for housing, for uh, craftsmen. There's, it wasn't weapons. It wasn't magical in nature. I am hard pressed to think of anything that might be relevant to your mission based on those materials. So, so it's unlikely that it was for destruction of the materials, but more likely for destruction of um, your your credibility or your my workforce, your, my people, right. my yes, that's, that is my suspicion. I mean, certainly it would have been a financial blow to lose, uh, you know, these warehouses, but much more of a blow to lose the the workers and the people and the families who reside in this town. Um, further, you say that she is guarded. And and that's because they're af you're you're someone is afraid she will talk. Someone wants to know what she knows other than you. It's a possibility. Um, by by posting guards on her guards who are sworn to not let her go, then I am simultaneously denied access to her as our other factions. Uh, her knowledge is kept direct to whoever controls those guards and whoever controls her when she presumably recovers enough to wake up and talk. 
uh, and potentially they control her ability to disappear her as soon as she is awake enough to do so. Um, yeah. Does anyone have the ability to insight check her? Sure. Uh, that's a good good idea. Because this is like super kind of weird. I have plus two. 15. Anyone with proficiency can roll on that if you like. But us non-proficient folks cannot. Um, I don't think so. Not not with a group like this. With if you if you if you're individually the one doing the talking and you want to make an insight check, that's fine. If you want the rest of the group to kind of do that, uh, proficiency rolls would be fine. Okay. Okay. Um, you can also just click wisdom on your sheet, Rimbo, if That's easier for you. You don't have to figure it out on your own ah. for that. But uh, okay. okay. So we have a fifteen and a seven. All right. Um, then uh, Bernard, you. She seems to be. Uh, concerned at the right moments uh she seems concerned about the loss of life concerned about the threat to her uh to her house um she seems to be telling the truth as best you can tell about the products and equipment being moved from there was there anything else you were looking for like what other parts were you paying attention to what other things were you looking for when you when you make that insight check just general truthfulness so nothing nothing in particular not that you just noticed. anything that was like wait that doesn't sound right Fiden, you seem to notice that she is extremely uh, confused and a little concerned about a child as one of the members of the group. So that's all you get from uh, from that seven. About, yeah, about our little demon child. That's right. Okay. Um, so, I'm concerned too. <laughs> right. F fortunately, we've got some history that proves this isn't as foolhardy as it seems. Um, when you mention to be discreet and to minimize loss of life, I'm not sure if I, I had a little nap or whether you left the guards out of the list of people we were supposed to be gentle with. This is a matter of priorities. I fear a greater loss of life, especially if this were to happen again, either in other villages surrounding Molemaster or in the city of Molemaster itself. I fear a greater loss of life than one or two individual guardsmen, especially guardsmen potentially at the beck and call of the hawks. At the same time, not all guardsmen are corrupt. Some guardsmen are following the orders of their superiors in a proper chain of command and are out there protecting the citizens of Mullmaster. I would prefer you minimize loss of life if at all possible, but I understand that may not be possible if you were to require uh, this girl for me. I think we should go and take over control of guarding this woman. We need to, we should be their guard, the guard. I want her brought back here. Uh, not just remaining at that. We will arrange medical care for her here. That is fine. Uh, but I want her recovering where I have direct knowledge of <laughs> where she is and who is watching her at all times. It, you said earlier she's she's your direct subject, right? She's part of your camp or your, your city. I, Why is she not under your men, control now? None of my men recognize her. Uh, it's possible. I mean, she's from the reports I've had, she's a bit disfigured right now. She has a bandage over her eye, probably lost the eye, covered in burns and scrapes and bruises. But no one we know recognize her. So it's possible so, she was a family member of somebody working directly for us. But I don't know who she is. The town okay. was under your control, but yes. she wasn't directly. So she's just mm. the only survivor with knowledge about what happened to the town. And you guys maybe have passed by this town or whatnot this isn't a super large town but what she's describing is destruction of a very bizarre kind this isn't like you know a, someone raided this town killed it and left the infrastructure or something this mm -hmm. is like demolished this is incinerated it was some sort of something that just so can we like this. see see it like off in the distance the so town is just like yeah it's probably big... it's probably it's it's a couple days by river so maybe not amazingly so but definitely maybe smudges on the horizon and maybe you can start putting that together with what she's just told you about that that oh that's what the hell that was going on and why there's why there's that disruption so and the river has been clogged coming down with this for the last while you might have seen the kind of wreckage floating through town the charred timbers and this type of stuff so all right. Do you guys have Shall anything else you want to ask Zora? The Zora. The Zora. Yeah. Shall we go, gentlemen? Sounds like quite a fun day. Okay. Well, um, my man here can uh, show you where you can find the House of Suffering. Uh, and you guys, I guess we can talk about compensation. Um, as I said, I'd be happy to if this goes well, I'd be happy to use you guys again in the future. I would be happy to pass on to other noble houses that I affiliate with 
the value of your services to give you kind of an unprecedented in for outsiders here. And of course, we'll financially uh, reward you guys for this. And we'll worry about that details another time because one off, right? So, so wait a second. The, the whole job is just to get this woman back. It's not to find out about the town. Nope. Just get this woman back. That's assuming oh. they're going to be the information. Okay. Shit. Sure. All right. Okay. So what do you guys want to do? Go to the House of Sovereign. Wait a minute. So you're saying that we have to drag an unconscious woman across miles of city? Are you asking me this or are you asking Zylo that? Uh, no, I'm, I'm asking Zora. How you get her here, um, I assume, would be part of your operation. Um, the This is Molemaster. Molemaster is a city of intrigue. Uh, the more eyes that see you, the more risk you put me in, and the more risk you put yourselves in, and the more risk you put her in. Um, this needs to be timely, so if that is the only option, so be it. But that's definitely the less optimal solution. Um, how you get a small girl, I mean, she's a girl, I say, she's a young woman. She's in her probably early 20s, but she's a small woman. How you get her here, there's... I would say three burly young men, but really one child and three men over there. Perhaps you could figure out a way to carry a girl here. Yes. So how you do it, it's up to you, but that's the outcome I want. Okay. Can we All have right. a, a sign from you, perhaps, to show the guards? Uh, the guards guarding her or my guards? Yes, you are a noble woman in this town, are you not? Perhaps your sign could carry some leverage. I can't command the guards to let her go. These guards are under order from a different authority than my own. I have my house guards and my personal guards, but I don't own the the council guards or ah. the city guards. So not a noble like from where I'm from then? Okay. Probably not. Mawaj. <laughs> <laughs> all right okay guys what are we doing going to the house of suffering okay let's go we we don't have any other plans to make no negotiations to do no just okay i mean we have i assume we have like pack speak. animals with our party right so we'll just oh. put her on a horse or something we'll be fine okay no i i have a uh, background of <laughs> city secrets. I, I can find us a secret route or passage. We'll be able to smuggle this woman back. Alright. Cool. Um, actually, what, what background is that? Because I have, uh, I have Urchin. We travel twice as fast in cities. I think that might be the same one. City secrets background? Uh, Urchin? We might have the same one. I just yep. linked it in chat. Yep. Okay. So, so I'm sorry, our powers combined. We'll, we'll we get her here. Did we have some kind of like horse or something like that? Sure. Uh, you guys are travelers. Uh, I can. I think it's totally reasonable that you guys came in on horseback. Um, right. Okay. There are some restrictions to horseback in this city, uh, mm -hmm. but at this this area, that's fine. Uh, in in the noble areas, you're certainly welcome to have horses. Um, probably another point of information that's relevant to you guys is that the hour is fairly late. It's about 7 p.m. right now. Okay. Um, so. And I'll put that in chat. I think that's a good thing that Adam does that I want to steal. So, so how about something along the lines of we we bring one horse with us to the to the place and we just throw her over the edge and like cover her with a blanket, and bring her back like that. What do you guys think? For the whole smuggling part. Sounds good to me. All right, cool. And um, uh, and and you're saying not all of us on horseback with with her, with us, all of us on foot and her just yeah. uh -huh. swung like a sack of wheat. Right. All right. And, and uh, ironically enough, the, the the ten year old is probably the one to uh, sweet talk the guards. I'm sure this will go well. Oh, okay, why so... wouldn't it? <laughs> okay. Right. <laughs> right. Because you're, you're ten years old. God, it feels so much better to be on the other side of these plans. <laughs> okay, so so is there anything else we want to decide before we go to the house of suffering? Um, she's given us location. Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, we 
Yeah, I guess. I can't think of what I need to know besides, go for like, it. go retrieve her. Well, I, I, I'm getting the impression we should probably be trying to talk our way past the guards. I mean, I'm hoping we don't have to kill them. Right. Um, is there any way we could we could try to find a back entrance to this uh, this house of suffering? Some sort of a, a window on a, we could sneak through and not let them not alert the guards to our uh, abducting this young woman. Yeah, I think I think I'd like to go like near the house of suffering and reconnoiter a little bit. If we can, you know, yeah. zip line in or something, that'd be great. You got a case to I, join. I'm I am rather stealthy. Yeah. I know I don't sound it, but sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Super stealthy. Looking forward to all of that. All right. Okay, so scout out the House of Suffering. I like that. Okay, so you just uh, let me know if you guys are still in planning. That's totally fine. Uh, I'm not trying to rush that. Uh, but if when you guys are ready to go, let me know, and we can start progressing towards right. the House of Suffering. Um, well, while we're on, uh, are you guys ready? Yeah, Sorry. I'm ready. Jeez, uh, no, I'm not ready. But I can't think of any way to delay us any further, so I guess, <laughs> guess right. I'm... I mean, I mean well, just, it's time-sensitive, so we can't just right. wait. It's already 7 p.m., so presumably we we could theoretically maybe wait a few hours till nightfall and um, It's It's uh, a avoid... area, so it's it's starting to be dusk about red about now anyways. Well, why don't we go and do some scouting it with, you know, dark vision and just check things out and, like you said, re reconnoiter whatever yeah let, let's let's just go and scout for sure at least and based on what we find there we might well like we might reconvene and talk of our options better then um i'd like to take if we're going we're probably using our shared urchin power uh wonder twins activate um i'd like to go a slightly um non-direct route i it, we we have the bonus of of getting there twice as fast with the urchin power but um i don't mind meandering just a little so that it's not like a straight beeline that every spy and and eyeball can tell what we're up to and as you saw um the position she's in as she explained her organization has recently been compromised by internal spies this, this is finding she's been finding spies in her organization she's on a skeleton crew in this house you can see that it's not a this is not the entourage that a lord of Molemaster would often travel with. She's trying to keep this to some degree on secret because she doesn't trust a lot of her normal employees. So that might be there might be some advantage to doing what you've suggested in terms of not directly bringing a million people back to a not particularly fortified location. The other thing I'd like to do, I guess, um, is either check my world knowledge, as you said earlier in the in the session or a role for whether or not her house is actually in trouble, whether or not she actually still holds any power, whether or not, you know, she's she's the butt of any any commonly known intrigue. Okay. Um, well, you haven't been in Mullmaster very long. Um, you were brought here specifically for this this uh, this mission. Um, so I guess if you arrive this evening for that, there might not be a lot in the streets of that. Uh, I'd say that you may have vaguely heard of some of the Culkin products, like Molemaster is that is a port city. Like her house is a well-known craftsman house. Like it, it has some of the finest craftsmen of Molemaster or, or, or relative to that. So she has some reach. Um, you know that her house is extremely wealthy and that she is one of the top tier kind of lords of the city. And again, it's it's essentially realistic. It's hypothetically, that's the word I'm looking for, a meeting of equals for lords. But the wealth kind of makes that a bit more striated, striated than it might otherwise be. And she's towards the top of those tiers of wealth, or her houses anyways. So as to whether her house might be falling, well, that is literally the game that these nobles are locked in all the time in Molemaster, is jockeying for position for their houses. So the result of this sequence, not just your mission, but also of their of their town being burned down and their resources lost and the outcome of that may actually either raise or lower the status of her house in this in this environment. Right. Just the village being burned down directly lowers her weight within the city because she has less she wealth. She hasn't been able to create less wealth, hasn't protected her people. Right. There's worries right. of what this means. Does it does it in you know, does it mean um. that her house is falling, et cetera? Mm -hmm. Does she does she have any specific houses that she 
um, feels are her enemies? Or is it all just a big mix? Like, does she have any grudges? That's that's a really good question to ask her. Do you want to ask her that before you guys go? Yeah, yeah. I, okay. I would assume I'm smart enough to have done that earlier. Yeah, sure. She <laughs> says, um, you know, so much of this is done through alliances and betrayal. It's sometimes tough to spot your allies from your enemies. Um, I suspect that one of our long-term allies may be betraying us. This seems the spies in my organizations, the sudden change of fate from something that shouldn't be happening. I worry about our allies as much as I worry about our enemies. Perhaps one of them is compromised. The biggest overt threat that I know of is Tark Sullivan, and he is a uh, high-ranking lieutenant in the uh, in the city, in the the Hawks, which is a secret police of Valmaster uh, organization, he seems to be trying to crack down on my house, above and beyond the other houses, above and beyond what I would suspect is reasonable for that. We pay our bribes, we we keep up to date with what we should be doing. We are not a particularly particularly engaged in activity that should be bringing him down upon us, but he has nevertheless been paying particular attention to us. Um, if you encounter him, be very careful. He's a very dangerous man and has a lot of weight in the in the Hawk organization. You said that he is he's dangerous, but is he the is he the ally, the long term ally that you suspect may no longer be an actual ally? He's, he's never not been he's... an ally of our house. So which o which specific that. other house is it that you feel is uh, likely to be the betraying ally? I mean, you you it's must hard. have some idea of who it could sure. be. Um, we're starting to get a little bit into the deep politics of my house, but I would not trust House Chalkin. Excuse me, not Chalkin. House Chalkton. It's C O C H O K T A N. I can put that in chat. Like that. You you don't trust them, but I, you're not sure. They are, they are a long-term ally of my house, a smaller house that has been on the rise for some time, and if you force me to say which of my allies I trust the least at the moment or suspect the most, I'd have no super overarching strong reason to suspect them. But if I had to make that distinction, I would I would choose this house. Is that house, you said it's on the rise. Has it been rising um, unnaturally? Is it is it growing? Is it getting strong faster than you think it should? They have allied themselves with us and we are good to our, to our allies. Um, they are led by a smart leader and have shown initiative and uh, been very innovative in what their approach has been. I, I don't know if it's faster than it should be or not. It's, it has been quick, their rise. Okay, fair enough. Well, I'm convinced this is going to turn out terribly. I mm -hmm. think we should go yep. face, face our fate and do what needs to be done. All right. So, so just before we walk out the front door, um, Jonathan Rubberford is going to uh, turn around and face you, and you see that there's like a spark in his eye, but it's not like the metaphorical spark. Like his eyes are actually on fire, it appears, and he's going to give you an inspiring speech. Um, well, team, we usually fight dragons, and we come out on top. These are only hawks, and I think they're actually people. Oh, I think we'll be just fine today. And uh, spend 10 minutes inspiring you. So everybody gains temp HP, uh, six temp HP. Cool. Forever. Would, would you say that <laughs> Until the it's next gone. nine minutes and 58 seconds are roughly the same as the first two seconds? Yeah, basically. Okay, there's re reiteration. Very animated, game. jumping up and down. Yep. Okay. I think we're gonna we'll, we'll see about balancing that. Uh, I like the I like the temporary hit. That's fine. But if, if that is the speech, it might also cause exhaustion. I'm not sure which yet. So we'll go with temporary HP for now. That sounds good. So and all you of said you... six? Yeah, yeah, six. All of you may gain uh, six temp HP. Cool. I like okay, it. How long does that last for, C? Oh, until it's, it's finished a shorter long rest? Until, oh. yeah. No, that's when it can't gain it again from that. Their temp HP, unless there's a rule that temp HP go away before a rest or something. Okay. There isn't anything on the ability that says that they go away. Sounds good. Okay. All right. So you guys are uh, on the road. And uh, Kevin, you were saying, uh, what's your, your character's name again? Wind Chi. Wind Chi. All right. Wind. 
So you are planning to not go directly there? You want to go a little bit more circumspect, uh, a little bit more... Uh... Circuitous? Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. Thank you. A roundabout. A little bit more uh, circumcised? That's my plan. That's that's your plan? Is, is he oh. of age? To, at 10, is this like a ritual of some sort? <laughs> I'll not have it. <laughs> Protect the boy. <laughs> oh. All right. So, um, all right, it's about 7 p.m. when you leave, um, maybe a little bit after if there's a little bit more questions to be asked. And you start heading through the city of Molemaster. You start in a fairly nice quarter. Um, this is clearly, uh, it's well patrolled. You can see guardsmen out and about uh, from time to time. Um, it's fairly busy for this late. Um, it's the equivalent of the weekend, kind of. It's like a Friday night. Uh, so there's people out and about uh, not only finishing up their work days, but also starting some some of the revelries of of you know, no work the next day style thing. So there's people out and about, not less of the partying kind of people in the, the noble area, but it doesn't take long to start seeing the area around you change. Uh, you start heading towards the House of Suffering, maybe, and I guess you're moving twice as fast as you would be otherwise. I'd say it's probably, you're on foot uh, leading a horse. Right. Okay, it's probably about two hours to get there um, to where you're walking to. So it would normally be a four-hour walk. Uh oh, right. You have you have urchin. Um, okay. So we'll call it an hour. That, that doubles your movement in cities, right? True. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So about an hour to uh, to get where you want by foot. You travel particularly well. A couple of you were raised in the cities. It sounds like, and you're familiar with moving through crowds of people and kind of the layout. A lot of it's uh, you know kind of grid layout, but then. Parts of it aren't. And as it gets poorer, it's less grid layout and more kind of hovels in the way or this type of stuff. Uh, and you are getting into a poorer area. So it goes from, you know, kind of nice area to you're starting to be more of a working area. You start to approach kind of the dock and port area as you get closer to the House of Suffering. And parts of that are really seedy and parts of that are kind of like working class, like well lived in style stuff. And it's busy out here. All right. So... Anything you want to do along the way, or just happy to kind of walk towards that general vicinity of um, the House of Suffering? I'm going to keep my eyes open to see if I spot clear observers, clear spies. I, I'd, I'd like to not necessarily have them notice I'm scanning and diligent, but if I can like start picking out hawks as I walk, then maybe I'll be able to spot them when it actually matters. If I, if I can tell what informants look like, um, I what might are, be able to make use of that later. What are you trying to do to disguise your looking around? So, um, I I think I'm going to try to look touristy in some way, like I'm like I'm just pointing out taking, the features of the dock or something. Well, like I'm taking in the sights, like I'm like I'm uh, you know I'll I'll look at the balconies and pause pause thoughtfully for a moment and and I'll 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 you know gaze off over the rooftops and let my eyes scan the crowd kind of as I'm as I'm looking at various architectural features and and uh, you know looking up and down streets like I'm maybe um, in, interested in learning the my way uh, just just are you willing to spend a little bit more time uh, for the journey to do what you've just described um you, you you say no, Zylo? Yeah, I think, I think I think time sensitive is a thing. I, well, except, I, I would disagree. I think we should because we're arriving an hour earlier than we would have otherwise with this street mm -hmm. urchin thing. Yeah. We have time. And, and at seven p.m., like we've got till seven a.m. Presumably, I don't I don't see this being a, a twelve hour gig. Probably, if it's an hour each way, call it call it three hours. Maybe once we're hauling that girl we've still got like six hours or eight hours to do the actual job job part of this thing without the travel mm -hmm. I, I if discretion is the is the the watchword for this whole mission i'd rather burn time and and know know okay. how to travel safely and know how to stay out of the eyesight of folks personally yeah okay, we can't we it. can't we can't let the, the child get killed here we've got to watch out for him here we got to do our diligence let's protect the boy oh and i you, thought I thought, you, I thought you meant the uh, the the girl we were rescuing. Well, uh, we want to help her, but I'm, I'm following this kid around for years. I gotta take care of him. Very, and very, I've got to take care of you. Very well, yes. paternal. Oh yes, yes. Okay, so is that is that a yes? You're willing to spend some time doing that? Yeah. Okay. Please. Um, all right, so it takes an hour. I'd say we add another maybe 20, 30 minutes to that. Call it 30 for that. You do an amazing job of that. So um, roll me a perception roll. That's for you looking for observers. And me? I really... Yep. Can I do the same thing? 
Uh, sure. Uh, if you guys have, a, if you guys want to do that, um, I will allow choose your two best perception people. If you all want to do that, and you guys can do it basically as an advantage. So each of you roll once. You can take the better of the two rolls. Um, I've got it as a skill. So I. And you said add advantage. Oh, because I will roll one. That's and you'll roll the other part of the advantage. You'll take the better of the two. Does that make sense? Oh, gotcha. And we already have a nineteen and a twenty-three. All right. Ooh. All right. So uh, a couple things happen as you're doing this. Um, first of all, you you do that 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 su that that suggestion is really good for how you would hide looking around. You do a very convincing job of being new to the area and kind of looking at the sights of Mallmaster. It's a little less convincing as you walk into the very poor areas of the city because there's not a lot of architecture in there. So you're just doing this thing like pointing out the nearest brothel or like. Wow, that's a very interesting pile of dung over on that side of the oh, street. Oh, look. So, There's more poor people here. Well, are any of the buildings made out of stone? Because I could, I could totally tell them all about the origin of the stone. Perfect. All right. So, you, so you're you're going to pull in the, the dwarven stoneworking element and start chatting about ah, some of the stuff? I'll, yes, there's definitely I'm gonna stone I'm going to make up some bullshit about that stone brothel there. It's, <laughs> uh, it's famous, in fact, because of the, uh, the history of... It was the first whorehouse in the history of, of time, actually. <laughs> The whores are oh, not wow. all, the whores are not all they're cracked up to be, but that stone came ten thousand <laughs> leagues. I love it when Faden talks about stone. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. So if so, okay. So we'll put these together then. The first part is the perception element. So as you're as you're looking around and paying attention, you're 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 also looking not only at the stone and the rest of it, but also for observers and hidden eyes, and you're getting a lot of attention. Um, you're not sure necessarily if that is entirely because you are uh, outsiders. Certainly some of that is outsiders. You're a fairly mixed uh, group of races, uh, and you are not the general populace of Molemaster, which is a fairly human city uh, in general. Um, but at the same time, you might be, you feel with Perception Roll 23, you're getting more looks than you'd expect. You guys have been new to cities before. You're always a mixed group of adventurers, and wherever you go, you stand out a little bit. You seem to be getting more attention than you could just account for from that. Um, and you're not sure if this is someone specifically watching you or just on the lookout for this type of thing. Molemaster is a city of intrigue. There are a lot of factions at play here. A lot of the success of factions is based on the information trade and on paying attention to what's going on. And you are clearly being marked by people as you head this way as someone of interest or note or potentially of interest or note as you're, as you're headed down uh, down that way. Um, can, can we tell if hawks specifically are watching us, or can we notice hawks specifically as, like, just notice them as we are walking by? The hawks are a secret police organization where they do so have we, symbols okay. and whatnot that they might use when they're, for example, part of a guards, a mixed group of guardmen okay. and hawks. You don't notice anybody with the symbolism of that that organization as you're, okay. as you're approaching there. It's not something expected that we would ever basically see advertised. Okay, gotcha. Right. Yeah, you, you may. I mean, you might. There is a there is the headquarters of the Hawks in the city that does have their symbolism on the walls and whatnot. But their regular day to day members of the, of this organization, their their foot soldiers and whatnot, are not going to be wearing the the that symbolism. Gotcha. Okay. So um, you guys make it down to the area around the House of Suffering, and I'm going to attempt our first transition of a map here. So. Um, if the screen goes black and there's just cursing, just assume that it's not successful. Um, let me just take a little quick look if I can drag you guys to there. Do you guys now see the new area? No? Please say series yes. Of, series of square rooms? Something. Yes! Well, okay. So I'll describe this. This is... Um, squares and rectangles. Squares and rectangles are a very important part of city architecture. We can ask the dwarf if you want uh, extra stuff of that. So the, the darker squares are the streets, and the lighter squares are buildings, if that okay. makes any sense. Yeah. So... This is yep. the big building in the middle, and I'll ping it. I think you guys can see pings. Can you see it's like a green ping or not? Mm, nope. I do not see that. Okay, let me try on a different level. Uh, there you go. I'm, I mean, yeah, we are that all was, that, was, that was player pings. We're, we're all pinging. You see the green right, <laughs> right. there in the middle? Yeah, green. Yes, we okay, can see that, one. that building is the House of Suffering. It is a, this is about five foot squares, so it's about a 50 foot, a little bit longer, I think, a 50 foot long building. Um, it has two doors. You can see them marked on the map uh, on the bottom left and top right entrances of that. Um, it has no windows. Uh, it's a relatively low structure. Uh, and you, from it, you can catch the scent of suffering and dying, basically, as well as incense 
happily trying to cover that over, um, but not doing all that great of a job. From it, you hear kind of the moans and groans of the sick and wounded in there, uh, and that's the building uh, from what you can see there. Around it are a number of other buildings of note, and I'm gonna tell you about them in just a second here. Um, but we have reached the point, which is probably a good cut point for this episode. So um, we tend to do four parts for these uh, four hour sessions. This gives us a chance to walk around, get water, et cetera. So we're gonna cut the part here. Thank you very much for watching guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed it and we'll see you soon.